أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين محمد ابن إسماعيل البخاري mentioned a beautiful narration on the authority of no other than the greatest teachers that ever existed Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this narration I term the ingredients of success and prosperity in this narration I term other ingredients of ultimate victory he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al muslim akhu al muslim la yudlimuhu wa la yuslimu wa man kana fi hajati akhih kana allah fi hajati wa man farraja an muslimin kurbatan فرج الله عنه كربة من كربات يوم القيامة ومن ستر مسلما ستره الله يوم القيامة الله أكبر A Muslim is the brother the brother of another Muslim He does not oppress him nor does he leave him at the mercy of others nor does he leave him the mercy of others and whoever takes care of the need of a Muslim Allah will take care of his need and whoever lifts the hardship from a Muslim Allah will lift the hardship from you from among the hardships on the day of resurrection and whoever covers hides seals the faults the sins of a muslim allah will expose not expose the sins of you on the day of resurrection who cover yours in other words this is ultimate brotherhood this is ultimate brotherhood ya akhwati al-a'iza listen to this brotherhood is so powerful in islam so powerful that our beloved teacher وسلم, swore by the Almighty Allah saying والذي نفسي بيدي لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمن ولا تؤمن حتى تحاب listen to these beautiful words you will never ever enter paradise never he said, until you believe. But listen to what he said after that. And you will not believe until you love one another. The Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in fact, warning us all to beware whom we take as friends. The reason why we befriend in this dunya informing us that all friendship on the day of retribution will be enemies will be foes except one type of friendship listen carefully ya ikhwati al-a'izah Allah informs us that the friends that we take today if we take them for the wrong reason other than for his sake they will not be your friends on the day of resurrection. They in fact will be your enemies, your foes. He said, Al-Akhillau Yawma Idin Ba'duhum Ni Ba'din Adu Illa Al-Muttaqeen He said, interpreted, Friends on that day. And we're all going to go to that day, believe me. Every single one of us. You can live for a trillion years, but guess what? You're gonna meet Allah one day. So we're gonna meet Him 
So he says, on that day, all friendships, all friends will be enemies to each other. Foes, they'll run away from each other. They're the enemies on that day, except one, he said. The friendship that was built on piety and genuine brotherhood for his sake. Genuine brotherhood for his sake. So in this dunya, you got to understand, and I'll explain it tonight, inshallah. What in the world is genuine brotherhood? What in the world does it mean to be, you are my brother for Allah's sake? Because we hear it everywhere. We see it everywhere. But have we understood it? The companions, the tabi'een, and the likes, our righteous forebears, the way they understood friendship is completely different than the way we understand today the Islamic Brotherhood. The great Ibrahim ibn Adham, a great Salafi, he was approached by a man as he was traveling to Jerusalem, his great righteous forebear. And this man said, cries out loud, Ya Ibrahim, I want to travel with you. I want to be your brother in travel. Ibrahim wants to examine this traveler wanting to travel with him. He said to him, on one condition. As Faddal Ya Ibrahim. Ibrahim said, that you allow me equal rights to your possessions, to your provisions. You want to be my traveling partner? You want to be my brother? In reality? In travel? No problem. But I want equal provisions that you own. Equal rights. So the man paused for a little. Equal rights? What? As soon as Ibrahim noticed his behavior, he said, stop. I admire your sincerity. You gotta think about it. You gotta think whether I'm allowed equal rights to your provisions and you wanna be my brother? My real, genuine brother? I think so. Ali ibn Hussein ibn Ali, listen carefully to this. And I am pretty sure none of us, none of us understand brotherhood, genuine brotherhood as this show about to mention Ali ibn Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu anhum he said to a man can one of you put his hand in the purse or the pocket of his brother and take whatever he so desires without his permission can anyone? Allahu Akbar. Can anyone put his hand in the purse or pocket of his brother without his permission? And take whatever he so desires. The man said, No. This is what Ali told him. And you are not true brothers. Then you are not true brothers. Where's love for your brother for what you love for yourself? Why is it just like lip service? Is it just a handshake? Love you, bro. Love you, love you. Cheap. That's cheap and junk. Another predecessor said, two brothers are likened to a pair of hands. Two brothers are likened to a pair of hands, one of which washes the other. Seriously, isn't that brotherhood? Jad and Jad, isn't that brotherhood? Allahu Akbar. If this is not brotherhood, what is? One of which washes the other. In other words, you know, you go back to the narration of the hadith, the five ingredients of victory and success. That's the brotherhood. Brotherhood is so powerful. That it transcends everything. Race, nations, 
culture, identity, gender, ethnicities. Al akhuwatu fil Islam is so powerful that it even transcends the human race itself. If only but we knew. And the brotherhood I'm talking about, ya akhwatil aiza, it's not the brotherhood built on this dunya. I can benefit from you, so I'm your brother. No, it's not based on economic interest, race, color, benefit, dunya. No. The brotherhood for the sake of Allah is based on something infinitely superior. And what is that? What is the real reason I love Umar? Because he's a boxer, he's got Lonsdale, London. Astaghfirullah. Is that why I love him? He's tough. You know, I feel great next to him. No. Why do I love Mustafa? Because I can see a big fat wallet in his shirt. No. Why do I love? Huh? Why do I love Abdul Ghani? Because he's an academic, he's smart, he's intelligent. Who cares? I don't love him because of that. The reason and the only way I can be a true brother is because I love him for the sake of Allah, which means that he rejects, he negates the hurt. While he affirms and he accepts What a beautiful reason. I love you all only for that reason. Wallahi. And this is the true and genuine sincere brotherhood. And if you all love each other for no other than this reason, all of you on the day, inshallah, you'll be real friends that will be whole, held as friends and not enemies on that day. So basically, Friendship, brotherhood, is not just a statement. Love you, bro. Nor is it just a handshake. Whatever you want, bro. Whatever you want. And when you want him, he's nowhere to be seen anyway. That's cheap. That's fake. That's phony. That's a lie. True brotherhood in Islam, for the sake of the Almighty Allah, is like a body. If one part feels pain, the whole body suffers because that's all my brothers in here. The whole ummah is a brotherhood from A to Z. If I know there's someone suffering out there and he loves Allah, I love him for that reason, I suffer with him. I don't amputate that pain and say, to you be it you and to me be it me. That's not a brother. That's not brotherhood. It's a solid cemented structure. A tremendous force. Brothers, when sangreens, sangreens unite, what do they become? A vast, beautiful desert. When the sea drops unite, what do they become? A vast, powerful, boundless ocean. And when we unite, who in the world can penetrate us. When we unite, we become an unbreakable, untouchable force, a powerful source of strength that no one can touch. When we unite for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the power of brotherhood. So we need to stand up and defend it in the face of every troublemaker and every haughty, arrogant individual is trying to break the bond, the sacred bond of Islamic brotherhood. This is our duty. Anyone who tries to destroy the bond of brotherhood is a devil. I don't care if it's a human being, it's a devil or amongst the human beings who's doing the work of Satan. Because Satan's intent is what? To destroy, to create huh? rancor, hatred, animosity, envy between us. 
Hence, we disunite. He is well aware. Don't let him in your lives, brothers. Don't let him in your homes. Don't let him in your hearts. He is well aware that if there's no brotherhood, there is no unity. There is no unity. There is no community. There is no community. There is no cooperation. There is no love. There's no care. There's no compassion. There's no affection between us. And if there's none of this between us in the brotherhood, what's left? Anarchy. Devastation. Disunity. Disruption. Destruction. This billion strong ummah. One billion plus. This billion strong ummah will become a billion weak segments. Fragmented into smithereens. And this is what the colonial powers desire. To breed destruction, disunity, and devastation in our ranks. Why? Divide and conquer. Divide and devour. Hence defeat. That's their strategy. And today, many, many of these forces of darkness are attacking us. That's not true, brother. Are attacking us through many channels. Wallahi, the shadows of darkness. See, you can't even see them. The shadows of darkness are attacking us, are invading us through many channels, through films, through movies, through the radio, the filthy media, through the darkness of the internet. Beware, beware, beware. Beware, ya shabab. The darkness and the filth and the evil of that internet. Beware. The Samir al Basir knows, sees exactly what you are doing. Beware. Tomorrow you're going to see him. Beware. So, this is what they're doing towards us, to us, trying to disunite us through many channels. I call it. A leper black death pandemic. I call it a leper black death pandemic. Brothers, we see the roots of Islam being uprooted and we're taking care of the leaves. Honestly, the roots of Islam, as we speak, are being uprooted from every direction and we're just taking care of the leaves. Be aware and vigilant of what is happening today in our world, of the world, the current state. This is why a true believer is not the one whose focus is only on prayers and, and siyam. Yes, it's important. But a true believer, his main and only focus should be wherever he is, no matter when it is, on gaining the pleasure of al malikul Qudus. That's your focus in this life, 24-7. In everything you do, no matter where you do it, when you do it, is this pleasing to Allah? So you, you can never gain the pleasure of Allah unless you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And how many of us condemn our brothers for that which we do? How many of us get angry when someone backbites us while you backbite others how many of us get extremely sore and hurt when no one forgives you or someone does not forgive you that's hypocrisy where is the love for your brother what you love for yourself you want this person to forgive you not to talk about you not to condemn you but you do all of it you do all of it how many of us here tonight with no finger pointing how many of us here tonight have a beef with someone? Have a grudge against someone here? You may not have a grudge with someone here, but elsewhere. And when you advise your Akhi, you, who's a servant of Allah, forgive your brother. Forget the grudge. Let it go. 
You don't know what he did to me, you say. You don't know what he's been doing to me. That's the way I feel. Unless he comes to me first, I'll never forgive him. And then you ask his brother, I want to ask you a simple question. You say to him, who do you emulate? Who do you copy? Who is your role model? And naturally the answer is, that's a silly question. Rasulullah Sallam is my role model. Well, guess what? You are lying. And you may ask, why am I saying that? Because if he was truly your role model, Rasulullah Sallam, he forgave the man who murdered, who slaughtered his beloved uncle. He forgave the man who murdered his beloved uncle, cut his organs into pieces, and then gave it to someone to eat, he forgave him. He forgave those people who abused him, accused him and taunted him. And you say you follow him? He's your role model? When you cannot even forgive a person who looked at you in a bad way? And you say, he is the one you emulate? Well, guess what? You are lying. That's not true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to cultivate the trait of love, care, forgiveness between us. He says, Let them overlook and pardon. Allah is telling us, overlook and pardon others. Would you not like Allah to forgive you? Forgiveness is definitely crucial and tantamounts to a victorious and successful hereafter. Next life, inshallah ta'ala. I'm going to leave you with this beautiful narration. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting in the masjid with his companions. When a man walked in the door, so sallam looked at that man and he pointed towards that man that just walked in. He said, see that man? He is from Ahlul Jannah. He was telling his companions. From who? From amongst the inhabitants of paradise. So Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Aas, being who he was, a devout worshipper, always searching uh, for new ways to get a lot of reward. That was his life. He wanted to know what quality, why this man is from Ahlul Jannah. So he spent three days with this person. But he did not find anything special. No extra prayer, no extra fast, no extra charity, no nothing. So he asked him what he did to give him this special rank. So this companion said, the one that's been given the glad tidings of Yanna, he said, Ya Abdullah, my deeds, listen carefully, my deeds are nothing more than what you saw. That, this is the ingredients of success. This is brotherhood, listen carefully. But, the only thing I do is that I never ever hold a grudge against any Muslim. Nor do I envy anyone for what bounties Allah has given two ingredients no grudge and no envy towards any Muslim this was the reason the Ibn Allah Ta'ala amongst many that he was granted Jannah and what did Abdullah say he said it beautifully he said this difficult quality to obtain is the reason why you have achieved this special rank why you have achieved this special rank. All of you, let this ego go. We've got a problem in our hearts, a major problem. We've got an ego problem, an arrogant problem. Unless he comes to me, I'm not gonna forgive him. Who does he think he is? He's your brother in Islam. And you forgive him and Allah will forgive you. That's who he is. No. 
that the real spiritual warrior is not on the battlefield. May Allah preserve him. But the one who destroys an idol. And the biggest idol that exists is within us. Our ego. The biggest idol that exists is inside here. This ego problem that we have. You know, we've got this boastful behavior, ostentatious behavior. I'm this and I'm that. No, you've got to come to my door, to my car, in front of me, and almost beg me, and I'll never forgive him otherwise. Like, fa'alak. Wallahi, fa'alak. Because you're not a true believer. You're not a true believer. Freak! Destroy this idol that exists in the innermost regions of your heart. And that's your ego. Love each other. Care for one another. Forgive each other. Let that grudge go. Stop nursing it. How in the world are you going to meet the Almighty Allah on the day of judgment when you have a grudge against your brother? How? There's no logic in it. Do it now before tonight or tomorrow you may die. Before you sleep tonight, make sure. And I say this out of advice and care wallahi for you all. Start it with myself. Make sure that you have nothing in your heart for anyone. Relatives, cousins, friends, brothers, biological or in faith. Let it go. Grab it and say, Ta'alaiki ya shaitan and throw it out. Forgive. Even if it means calling the person you have a problem with and saying, Ya please forgive me. And guess what? It takes a man to do that. It takes a real man, Wallahi, to do that. A real man is not a man with biceps like this and a chest like that. No. A real man is the one who admits his mistakes. I think it's uh, time to uh, stop my loudness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all brothers. Wallahi, we are a, a great nation. A great nation. Don't destroy it. Don't be of those who destroy this great nation. The unity of Islam. It's up to you. Because we are, as the hadith says, the mu'min is like a brick to another mu'min. A believer is a brick to a believer. Believers strengthen other believers. When you as a builder, and all those builders know, when they build a house or a garage or whatever, and using bricks, if you are using those bricks and there's one brick missing, you feel an emptiness, weakness in that structure. And when you put that brick, you find strength and power, solid structure, Tremendous force. This is you. You are that brick, Wallahi. You are that brick. And be on the day of resurrection where you talk to the Almighty Allah and you will talk to Him. No translator. Ya Allah, I was a brick. Not a failure. I was a brick of support and strength for my nation.